Coming up on Inside California Education. When we have um, general education students come approach our kids, you know, invite them to play, um, that may, that's a big step for our kids. Autistic students in Visalia are learning important social and language skills, a new and innovative way to integrate them with the rest of the student body. The bell is going to ring in 10, 9, UCLA partners with the public school in South Central Los Angeles, giving the neighborhood and the school new hope. I can't stop eating it. <laughs> and Lodi schools serve local food grown by local farms, part of a statewide effort to freshen up the lunch line. It's all next on Inside California Education. Funding for Inside California Education is made possible by since 1985, the California Lottery has raised more than $32 billion in supplemental funding for California's 1,100 public school districts from kindergarten through college. That's approximately $191 for each full-time student based on $1.5 billion contributed in fiscal year 2016-17. With caring teachers, committed administrators, and active parents, every public school student can realize their dreams. The California Lottery, imagine the possibilities. The Stewart Foundation, improving life outcomes for young people through education. Thanks for joining us on Inside California Education. We start in the Central Valley town of Visalia. Autistic students there are grouped together for specialized learning, but they also frequently mix with the rest of the population for regular school activities. Michael Sanford visits three schools in Visalia that are part of this innovative approach. <laughs> what color? What? Use your whole sentence. What? I, I, what? What? Nice. Okay, go get it. See what you get. <gasps> what did you get? Snake. You got a what? That's snake. Snake. Speech pathologist Kristen Schaefer is developing verbal communication skills with students at Viva Blunt Elementary School. Her work here is part of an innovative program in the Visalia Unified School District to address the needs of students with autism. Speech and academics are pretty close together because we work on not only what they say, but we also work on their receptive and expressive language. So receptive language is what they know inside. And expressive what language is things like vocabulary, being able to <laughs> express it out using sentences, the correct grammar, and that really ties in with the academics as well. So we, we're really just a support to get them to be able to succeed. What's that? Sheep. Sheep. Sheep begins with what sound? Sheep. Can you see that? Shh. Good job. Shark. Shark. Where do we find sharks at? Suck. Where are they at? The suck. Are they at home or in the ocean? The suck. Home or the ocean? Ocean. Ocean. Communication is huge, and so a lot of times if you can't have that communication, you'll see behaviors. You'll see a lot of tantruming. You'll see them running out because they're trying to communicate, but they don't know how. And so a lot of times you just have to find that right key to be able to have them communicate as far as it could be verbal, it could be gesture, it could be with a picture, just as long as um, they're able to do it effectively. Visalia developed what they call their Collaborative Autism Partnership, or CAP program, in 2013. Some 60 students are served in six classrooms at Viva Blunt Elementary. The program works to improve not only language development, but social and behavior skills, as well as academic achievements for students in the autism spectrum. Alexis, can you write your name? A L D X I S. Anise! Each of the classrooms has separate instruction areas where students move from skill set to skill set with teachers and specialists working as a team. When you look at the, the collaborative relationship that can happen to support more students, it can be a benefit to everybody. That regimen has been shown to help these youngsters improve socially and academically. 
a huge increase in communication um, and behavior and just you know uh, basic skills that students need to be able to access in an environment being able to sit and attend um, independence in completing um, you know uh, assignments presented in addition to the 60 students at Viva Blunt the CAP program was designed to move students with autism into other supportive classrooms at El Diamante High School and La Jolla Middle School. What did we get over here, Nick? Trash. Trash. Okay, we cleaned up some trash. What else? Mm -hmm. And hey, check it out. Bottles hey. and cans. Very good. Okay, so we got plastic bottles and cans. Okay, we collected them to yeah. recycle them. Okay, so other reason why it's important it creates jobs everyone say it creates jobs creates jobs very good we were intentional with the sites that we picked so we're in uh, feeder schools so uh, Viva okay. Blunt students naturally would go to La Jolla and then La Jolla students would naturally go to LD so it's nice they get to have the same kind of school community experience as you know typically developing student at El Diamante High School CAP students also take part in activities outside the classroom Today, it's hands-on baking. My name is JC. I'm scooping up the cookies. I'm gonna s smash them to make it look like that they're cookies, and I'm, and I'm gonna put these cinnamon on 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 them. You know what else? What I like the best? I I like to draw. Cap emerged from a number of studies showing that improving language and social skills provided a pathway to helping students with autism better integrate into the general school population. I think the, the way we look at it is there are some kids that certainly bring them together into a single spot to better address the needs of the student is where we want to go. But we also have great interest in having kids who are ready to take the step into a traditional school setting to do so as quickly as they're able to do that. That's where the best education occurs, it's where the best socialization occurs, it's where the best product occurs from the, from the kid perspective. It's for Thanksgiving, so what are we, what are we thinking? What do you think the turkey's saying? Because everybody eats turkey on Thanksgiving, right? Yeah! Education specialist Joel Castillo says an important part of the CAP program also centers on bringing his youngsters together with general education students. That shared time takes place during lunch, in physical education classes, and on the playground during recess. Ready, Wyatt? The one thing we try to do is just build relationships with our general ed students, our general ed teachers, and that way the kids are familiar with our students. Um, and when, so when we know we're out on the playground that those kids are, are playing, um, you know, being good role models for our students. Much of the current research on autism has been done by the UC Davis Mind Institute. Dr. Aubin Stamer says general education students also benefit when given the opportunity for interactions like the CAP program. There are some lovely studies that show that children who are educated with other children who have autism or other neurodevelopmental diver diversity really do have better social interaction skills, better empathy and understanding. So I think it's, a, it's important for all of us. The California Department of Education says some 97,000 youngsters in the Golden State have been diagnosed as autistic, a seven-fold increase since 2001. Those numbers have prompted educators to look for innovative ways to serve these students. We're really about getting kids what they need, when they need it, to access their education and be successful. And that includes kids with autism, but it includes every single student with every single possible issue, need, and diagnosis that they have. And so we're really trying to move from more of a label-based um, model to a much more need and support based model where we look at what that need is and we meet it. We're identifying more kids, we're better at what we, what we do from that perspective, we know more and also the fact that with the larger population and Visalia is growing, we are going to have more kids with all different kinds of needs across the district. And as we learn together and build our knowledge and build our skill to support those kids, that only benefits everybody else because, because as you learn more to support our special kids, that makes you better with everyone else. Did you know some experts believe geniuses like Mozart, Einstein, and Charles Darwin may have had autism? Scientists and doctors have retroactively diagnosed these individuals based on mannerisms they displayed during their lives. Other famous people with autism include actor Dan Aykroyd, filmmaker Stanley Kubrick, and Pokemon creator Satoshi Tajiri.
UCLA is one of the highest ranked universities in the U.S. So it's no surprise that when they put their name on a middle school in Los Angeles, the local residents took notice. Let's visit their new community school, where UCLA's partnership with the school district is raising hopes of turning around a school with a checkered past. Greg Emilio has the longest tenure, by far, of any teacher at Horace Mann Middle School in South Los Angeles, 23 years and counting. This week's student of the week, Josh. Josh Rosales, nice job. Okay, don't be jealous. Mr. Emilio is one of the few constants these kids have in a school and in a community known for turbulence. We're in what used to be called South Central Los Angeles and then they dropped the Central because it had like the negative connotations. We're in a community that has a lot of like gang violence, a lot of drugs, a lot of poverty. There's been turnover, like administrators, I can count at least 10 principals, you know, hundreds and hundreds of teachers. So I mean, think about that. Think about trying to create a team that's gonna be effective and every year you have new players. I mean, it's, it's horrible, right? Historically, schools like mine have kind of been places where some teachers have gone to high and we're no longer gonna be that place. Principal Johnson's confidence that his school is making a turnaround is all due to its new partnership with UCLA. Okay. UCLA signed an agreement with the school district in 2017 to transform Horace Mann into a UCLA community school. The principal's job really is to try to enable your teachers to achieve their vision. And UCLA, I think, is going to enable me to be able to do that for them, give them the additional help that I might not be able to provide. Our model working with schools is really to work in collaboration with them and to figure out what's the best way to grow that school to be the best that it can be. UCLA's Christine Shen says the South LA community was initially skeptical of the partnership. That was until UCLA followed through on a promise to start a summer program so students had somewhere safe to go during break. And so that really garnered a lot of trust and belief that we're here to stay and that when we make a commitment to something, we make a promise, it does happen. Since they said that UCLA was going to come here, I wanted to give it a go to see how it was going to work out for my daughter. And so far, she's having a good time here. Kimberly Sumrall is a parent volunteer at Horace Mann. She says she hopes other parents will open their minds about the school. Generations, like decades of generation, it was always about the gang environment where it would keep the kids or their, their parents are away from the school because of the reputation of the school. I feel once UCLA stepped in and is trying to change all that, I still feel this community should still give the school a chance. One of the biggest things is you put UCLA's name on anywhere and it's going to draw people in. So I think it's good for the community and starts to bring hopefully a lot of our kids back that have been going to charter schools or getting bused to other schools in the district. Elijah and Bella are two students who are giving the school a chance. They're both part of the inaugural freshman class. UCLA is expanding the school up to 12th grade by the year 2020. When I first came here, I was in sixth grade. And so it was kind of, the school was doing kind of bad. A lot of things were trash, didn't look really nice. When we paired up with UCLA, it did a full 180 and how it looks now, it's beautiful and everything. Campus is clean. I've had siblings that have been here before that are much older than me and have talked about the things that have happened in um, this school and how it was before, all the fights. Now I think about it and I look at my teachers and I'm thankful because I have the extra help that I need in order to succeed because of the great changes the school has had, not only in the way it's viewed by others, but in the way that we view it ourselves. Bella says she's also found inspiration from the UCLA college students who volunteer at the school. I didn't really want to go to college because I felt that it was unnecessary because my parents didn't go to college. But then I've heard so many things about UCLA. I've saw so many clips of students and t um, student teachers that have been like talking to me about how college is such a wonderful thing to do. I've decided that I want to be a um, OBGYN. We're really committed to seeing and viewing and honoring each student as an individual and helping them all get to college. Perhaps most importantly, UCLA has added more full-time teachers who truly want to be at the school. Shreya Venkatesh is one of several new teachers hired out of UCLA's teacher education program. 
It's challenging to be a first year teacher because you're building the plane as you're flying it. It is also challenging to work, I think, at any Title I school, but also at Horace Mann because students have a long history of not being able to depend on staff, whether that's because there have been long-term subs or because they've had a bad history in the education system. That's what makes it a challenging environment to work in. But at the end, I think it is worth it. Hopefully now, with these UCLA people, maybe they'll actually make like a three, five, ten year commitment because that's what it's going to take. It's going to take relationships, it's going to get taught, take time for them to kind of know the community, know the kids here, have their little brothers or sisters. Like I've, I've taught multiple generations of kids at this school. Who can name every character in The Outsiders so far? Go ahead. Um, Johnny, Dally. In time they're going to get more respect and more ability to actually do the job effectively. UCLA officials say they know it will take time, years, even decades. But they're confident that Horace Mann will succeed. After all, they've done this before. Back in 2009, UCLA opened a brand new community school on the Robert F. Kennedy campus in the Koreatown neighborhood of Los Angeles. Our inaugural students are now in eighth grade, so they were kindergartners uh, nine years ago. It's been amazing to see them grow up, and it's the same for our high school students. The longer we've had them, and the more we really get to see just this human being develop into a scholar. Today, the Robert F. Kennedy campus is a bustling kindergarten through 12th grade site with about a thousand students. Remarkably, 100% of its graduating students have been accepted to a two-year or a four-year college. And it's easy to see why. The college-going culture here is strong. Signs of UCLA are everywhere, from the college professors who drop by as guest speakers. You might break up some of these shapes with a cloud in front of. To the UCLA gear being sported by fourth grader Kenneth. So far, I've been wanting to go to like the college UCLA since third grade. Because in third grade, um, we've been doing this parade. And so far, I've only been wanting to go to the college UCLA. The Robert F. Kennedy campus serves as an impressive model of what public education can become when the resources of a major university are paired with the school district. We think that every child should have access to a high quality public school education no matter where they live. The rationale for starting the second school in South LA is that we want to do this again. We want to engage meaningfully. It's not going to be the same as this campus in any way, but it's going to be the same commitment to creating a space that is a powerful community school where all students are prepared to succeed in college and civic life and careers. Back at Horace Mann, Principal Johnson says he's starting to see something new among his students, a belief in themselves. Now the kids are kind of holding us accountable and they're asking us questions and they're wanting more because they feel like they're entitled to better, they're entitled to the best. And I think that's, that's an important change. UCLA's two community schools are sites of learning for students, teachers, and faculty. It is a mission that's tied closely to the university's roots. UCLA started out as a so-called normal school for training teachers in the late 1800s. In 1919, UCLA became the second school of the University of California system after UC Berkeley. California is world-renowned for its farm-to-fork food movement in restaurants throughout the state. But it may be surprising to discover that same effort is now making its way into schools. California Thursdays is a campaign to serve locally grown food in local schools, like the one we visited in Lodi. When I was growing up, there were a lot more farmers in the United States. Most people lived on a farm or they had an uncle or a grandfather, somebody that was connected with agriculture. And that's not true today. Obviously food is what composes our body and, and makes us healthy. And so I think it's important that we understand how food grows, where it comes from and all the processes and, and why eating certain things is, is healthy. This is not just a bean, it's the seed for the yeah. next generation. Yeah. So, Gerald uh, Fry is the owner of Moore Fry Ranch, a family farming operation based in Lodi. These the heirloom beans are one of their here. signature products, and soon they'll be dished up for students in the Lodi Unified School District, thanks to the efforts of Zenobia Barlow and the Center for Eco Literacy. 
There's nearly one billion meals served in schools in the state of California annually. So there's huge potential for feeding children healthy food. The center is working with 71 school districts in California to serve locally grown food one day a week, a campaign called California Thursdays. In San Diego, for example, I think they have a, at least 212 campuses and they're serving antibiotic free chili lime drumsticks and fresh vegetables. In Monterey, they have a bay to tray program, and so instead of kids eating pollock from Alaska, they're eating local Monterey raised fish in fish tacos. In Oakland, they're serving a whole wheat pasta with kale and chorizo, and that kale is from Alba Organics. And here at Lodi High School, the heirloom beans grown by Moore Fry Ranch in Lodi are being turned into a hearty pasta fagioli dish. So with the beans, when they, they come to us like this, a raw product, and we have to soak them overnight. It's very important to soak them or the quality doesn't come out as good. So when we started California Thursdays and cooking from scratch, the kitchen staff were a little has hesitant and unsure. Um, about what was going to be required to cook. It was a little bit of a transition for our staff, but once they could see the quality difference between a canned bean and a fresh bean and how beautiful these beans are, it really just got them excited about cooking and adding and introducing the students to that new product. I think it's great. Um, so many of our students don't get to eat the fresh food like this because they can't afford it. So I think it's wonderful that we can offer these products to the kids. Very good. I can't stop eating it. <laughs> the Lodi Unified School District began the transition to fresher, more local food a few years ago. Along with the beans, they're now serving hot dogs made in Lodi and Sloppy Joe's using California beef. They found the biggest hurdle was bringing back kitchen equipment that had been removed, as well as training the staff to cook from scratch. Traditionally, uh, you know, if you looked at 50 years ago, freshly prepared meals were the norm, but as the processed food and fast food convention occurred across the country, schools stopped building kitchens and started serving heat and thaw meals. And so this is the resurgence of sort of the old fashioned way of cooking real food for real kids. And real kids say they can taste the difference. Today I ate some bread with this wonderful soup. It had beans in it. It's really good and it's very healthy for you. You know, they're like brown and stuff, so it has a good flavor, especially with all the spices, make it better. So all around, it's pretty good soup. Well, like in elementary school, we didn't really have this and it was more bland and then now it's not as bland and it's more diverse. It's not just like hamburgers and pizza. It's like bean soup and sloppy joes. It wakes me up more. I feel like I was saying, like, I, I used to, like, a few years ago, I'd fall asleep in class all the time, and now, like, after lunch, I'm, like, awake and ready. It's probably a little bit better to, like, eat healthy, so, like, hearing that things, like, come from, like, out of our backyard, like, it could come from right out of our backyard, it's kind of cool to think about that. Lodi Unified also put in self-serve salad bars at all their schools, offering students fruits and veggies that are 85% California-grown. We get our Acadian mix or our salad mix from the Salinas Valley. We have strawberries that have been grown right here um, close to Watsonville. It is all sourced here that we, can, that we can get during season. The fresh produce is not that much more expensive to bring it in local. The beans were on a pound per pound basis, but by the time I add in all the additional costs, it really isn't that much of a difference um, for us. Maybe a few cents on a meal, but it's well worth it. I like to know that the food that I eat is fresh and not come from a company and processed and just left in a can and shipped. I like to know that's fresh. Thank you. The 71 school districts in our network are examples of people who are innovating and making commitments to do this in large or small ways. My advice for other districts would be for them to start small if they're looking to introduce local foods or to be a partner within the California Thursdays initiative. And by doing that, they don't have to necessarily do the whole plate, but look at one item or a produce that they can bring in or a farm that's close by. They may not be able to do their entire district, but they can start it with one school and then expand from there and not be afraid of it because 
the families, the students, your staff really connect with knowing where their food comes from. That's it for this edition of Inside California Education. If you'd like more information about the program, log on to our website, insidecaled.org. We have video from all of our shows, and you can connect with us on social media as well. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Inside California Education. Here we go. We have four more. Oh, no. Oh, no. This week's student of the week, Josh. This is not just a bean, it's the seed for yeah. the next generation. Very good. I can't stop eating it. <laughs> Funding for Inside California Education is made possible by... Since 1985, the California Lottery has raised more than $32 billion in supplemental funding for California's 1,100 public school districts from kindergarten through college. That's approximately $191 for each full-time student based on $1.5 billion contributed in fiscal year 2016-17. With caring teachers, committed administrators, and active parents, every public school student can realize their dreams. The California Lottery, imagine the possibilities. So, Greg, it's a lot to take in. And I know that's hard to hear, but the doctors caught it early. Hi, Blake. My dad has cancer. And I know how hard that is to hear, but you're in the right place. And Dr. Pascal and her team, they know what to do. They know what to do. The doctors know what to do. So here's the plan. First off, we're gonna give you all this The Stewart Foundation, improving life outcomes for young people through education. Additional funding for Inside California Education is made possible by these organizations supporting public education.